ไปดิฮัลโหลทุกท่าน Here it is. this show off a little bit different uh, than I usually do. We are in Kansas. Um, I'm in Kansas. Uh, this is day six that I've been here, and uh, I'm just going to kind of, kind of do a little bit of a recap of what's been going on the last uh, five days, what I've found, and what my plans are. Um, got here last Saturday. Today is Thursday. Got here last last Saturday. Um, had some. Had kind of a front move through with some rain, and uh, I was kind of hoping, you know, it'd be pretty good. Uh, it wasn't bad. Uh, I went, I just kind of kind of done something a little different than what I usually do. Uh, I went straight to some areas that Jeremy had told me about that he's hunted in the past, uh, a few years ago. Uh, I think it's been like four years since he's been here uh, hunting. But I just kind of went to some of those places and uh, instead of really scouting, I just went there and hunted uh, for the first couple days and seen a handful of deer. Um, but definitely, definitely if I would have it to do over, I would do it completely different. I would do my scouting like I usually do, then find my places that I want to hunt and narrow it down from there. But, um, you know, once, you know, I kind of hunted those areas and kind of looking around, it didn't stand out to me. Um, so I was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, you know, do my scout like I usually do. Uh, I think on day three, I just said, all right, I'm not hunting until I find what I want to find. And then I'm going to hunt it according to the wind. Uh, usually when I go to area, I want to find three spots, uh, top three spots of everywhere I look. And then I want each one of those spots to be able to hunt. You know, I want, with those three areas, I want to be able to hunt any wind I'm given. Um, so, uh, day three, uh, I was like, boots on the ground, I'm looking. So, day three, I found a couple good areas, uh, used the boat, uh, walked in some areas, found really good signs, seen actually a lot of deer that day, just kind of up, looking around, moving, seen a lot of deer that day. Um, and, you know, found some good areas, and uh, kind of hunted hunted that afternoon, day three. Seen a really nice buck actually across the river from where I'm going to be today, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, but seen a buck. He was over with some does. Seen a few does over there, and on the map, it looked really good right there where they was at because it was kind of a corner of a CRP field, and this little corner come really close to the river. You know, probably 100 yard, 120 yard little strip right there, right next to the river. So it was kind of a funnel. And so day four, I was like, I'm just going to go over there and I'm going to look. I'm going to do it, you know, in the morning. If I find, if it looks good, you know, I'll hunt it. Went over there, found some sign, found some really good sign, really looked good. So I was like, I'm going to hunt this this morning and uh, ended up hunting it. That day, I actually ended up staying in there all day, seen deer all day long. Um, I actually seen a little buck come in there chasing a doe. I seen this little buck like three or four different times. Um, and he had a some kind of growth on his chest, right between his legs. Um, kind of kind of odd, never seen a deer with that before. But he ended up, he chased that doe most of the morning uh, and over into the early part of the afternoon. I actually watched him breed her. Which was kind of surprising. I didn't figure um, with the way she was acting. I didn't think she was going to let him breed her. But she ended up, she did. And they ended up coming by. Coming like right under the tree several times. And uh, got a good bit of footage of him. Real pretty little buck. Two and a half year old deer. And uh, so I, the next morning, which would have been yesterday morning. Wind switch. So I was like, well. You know, these deer were kind of playing this wind right here today. I'm going to go on this other end and hunt. So I ended up going there and uh, went in there, climbed up that uh, yesterday morning, sat there maybe 45 minutes. I was like, no, getting down. I want to put some more boots on the ground. I want to really, really find the best areas around this CRP field 
and you know see what kind of sign i can find because i really didn't look the day before i just kind of went in there found that little spot knew i'd seen several deer and hunted it and still seen several deer um so yesterday after i hunted it you know maybe 30 45 minutes yesterday morning i got down and i done a lot of walking and looking um and i come into this crp field a little different way and it had been bush hog right around the edge like maybe a 10 foot strip but on this one side um there was a ton of scrapes right down the edge of this uh, mowed lane and a bunch of tracks too walking it so i done a lot of looking and there was a couple of really big scrapes and it looked like several bucks have hit these scrapes since you know last saturday when we had that rain because you know wasn't like one buck had hit it and just pawed it from one direction. It was like several different directions it had been it had been worked from. So uh, ended up yesterday. I come out and I went to uh, what I would consider my uh, second spot, top spot that I had found. I'd seen a lot of deer in the other day. Found a really good funnel. Ended up hunting it yesterday evening. Seen uh, seen a bobcat seen a uh, doe come running in there had a couple small bucks chasing her so i was like you know what i'm going to go back there in the morning just because the wind's going to be good and i'm going to hunt it till about 10 o'clock then the wind we have a front moving in today the wind's going to switch um and that's the main reason i didn't hunt this spot yesterday because the wind wasn't good and it wasn't good this morning so i was going to hunt my spot that i hunted yesterday evening I decided to hunt it this morning let the wind start switching when it started switching in the front rolling in i decided i was going to get down and come over here put the boat in go up here and hunt the rest of the day in this spot because the wind is going to get right where i can hunt it the rest of the day and really the rest of this week so we got a big front moving in it's it was 67 degrees earlier and it was dropping now it's like 50 something um it's supposed to drop the rest of the day and tomorrow morning is supposed to be 22, I think, 21, 22 degrees. Um, and it's going to be a high of like 39 tomorrow with 17 mile an hour winds. So I am super excited for that. Not. Um, but uh, no, I really think this front right here, this is what I've really been waiting on, wanting to find uh, some really good areas. And that's whenever you can hunt weather like this, this is really a key thing. Find really good areas, something you feel confident that deer are going to move when the weather gets right. And uh, I think I've really found that. So fixing to get in here and hopefully this front moving in, you know, possibly tonight, um, you know, they could come through there and get opportunity at one. Uh, but I'm really, really excited for tomorrow morning um, for deer traveling it. So. You know, I'm fixing to uh, fixing to grab me a little bite to eat here. It's uh, a little bit before 11 o'clock. Um, I'm gonna grab me a bite to eat, get my get me some little bit warmer clothes on for the temperature dropping this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna get the boat in and I'm gonna head up here and get set up, ready to go for this afternoon. Uh, I'm gonna hunt and then I'm just gonna leave all my stuff in there um, tonight and be right back in there tomorrow morning. But you never know. I mean, I have to be back in there tomorrow morning. It could happen this afternoon. Um, but we don't know if we ain't in there. So I'm going to make this pretty quick. Get in there and get set up and uh, get to hunting. So let's see how we can do. All right, we're set up. Ready to go. Got the front moving in. yard shot but that's picture perfect sometimes it ain't always picture perfect but uh it's 12 30 um, at nine o'clock this morning it was 70 degrees and right now it is 52 and steadily dropping so the front is here it is hitting right now um maybe to get these deer up on their feet and bring a big boy by us so Waited out the rest of the evening. Got about five hours left of light. Hopefully that's enough time to get one to come by us. So we'll 
dead deer. Freaking Kansas giant down, baby. Yes. Kansas freaking giant, baby. Whew. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Cold fronts pushing in. Big bucks get on their feet. And that right there was a giant. Oh, man, I was so scared he was going to hit my trail right here. So I had to cut around and shoot through, and I hit him back. But he hit that artery. He didn't go 80 yards. Yes, 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 yes. State number two, baby. Public land. Awesome. Freaking yes. That is a giant. Did you see the brow tines on that deer? What a freaking giant, baby. Yes. Whew. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go take a look at this son of a gun. Oh, let me see if I can find my arrow right quick. You know, it wasn't the best shot. It may still be in him, actually. Um, I don't see it anywhere. It had a light knock on it. But, uh, you know, it wasn't the best shot. Had to shoot through some stuff, but I was so worried that he was going to step right here and, and catch my ground scent where I walked up to the tree. That's the reason I took the shot I had. But, you know, good Lord bless me and give me the, let the area hit him good enough. He didn't run 80 yards. Whew, he was piling up through here. I ain't even looking for blood. I'm trying to get to that deer. Oh, that's a good deer right there, man. Ugh. Look at that. Oh my God. Look at that freak, man. What a freaking deer, baby. Yes. Look at his brow tines. Look at that. Oh my gosh. What a freaking deer. He's huge. The boat is right there. <laughs> oh. Look at that. What a buck. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is a freaking giant. I don't know where my area is. I gotta find my area. Maybe it's still in him. No. That's the same broadhead that I killed the deer in Wisconsin with. I got to get that broadhead anyway. Same broadhead, same air, same everything. Look at that. <sighs> yes. Been looking for my arrow for a little bit, and I just found it. It uh must have just barely hung on the opposite side of him, and he pulled it out. We're just laying right here. That right there, baby. Used to shot Wackums for a long time. Man, love the broadhead. But company kind of got sold couple times they started making cheaper and cheaper material making them out of cheaper material and uh i just i love fixed blades love small small diameter fixed blades so ran into this company tooth of the arrow uh this is a solid carbide steel broadhead can't replace the blades it's a solid piece of piece of metal resharpenable sharpening tool resharpen it this makes, with this arrow on this trip, 
two deer. Wisconsin, now Kansas. Blood soaked, baby. And look at that broadhead. I will sharpen that broadhead up and shoot it again in the next state. So, right there's the set. Literally. Here was my problem. Here's where I would love to have shot him, right here. I walked right here. And that the main reason was because, you know, I had no other shots this way. Or, you know, pretty much this way. But, he walked up here and he didn't do, they had, had a little buck come through earlier. Uh, the little buck stayed down here perfect, 20 yard shot, wide open. And when I first seen this buck, he was right up here. I was like, you know what? He's gonna do that same thing that little buck done. Perfect, awesome. No, didn't happen. Right here. This is where that buck was. I had to shoot through this stuff. Now, granted, yeah. It wasn't just a beautiful shot, but the deer's dead nonetheless. And I'm telling you, a lot of people, I know mechanicals, some people love them. That's great. I would never have trusted a mechanical to go through that, even though with them being, a, you know, closed up, that they're a, you know, smaller diameter. But whenever you, if you barely nick a mechanical blade and it comes open, it deflects everything. I would way rather shoot a small diameter fixed blade broadhead, even though it doesn't have that huge uh, cutting diameter that most broadheads do. But if I can shoot through stuff like this, and that's one thing about public land, you can't trim stuff. You can't cut lanes and have these big, beautiful spots that some people shoot these big mechanicals on. You can't do that. So you have to shoot through stuff like this on public land because it's uh, pretty much most states, uh, actually, I don't know of any that you can cut any kind of limb, tree, anything. All has to be done, you know, you know, you can't do that. It's just, it's against the law. And uh, that's why I use small diameter fixed blade broadheads. And these right here are so accurate. They are as accurate as my field tips, man. I love them. So, fixing to break my stuff down, I'm gonna go over here and uh, take a little better look at this deer right quick. Well, here he is, my first Kansas whitetail. And that's a giant right there. No doubt, probably my second biggest buck ever, if not my biggest. Absolutely giant brow tines, biggest brow tines I've ever seen on a deer. Big split brow tine over here, big probably 11, maybe 12 inch brow tine on this side, giant. Uh, you know, this is state number two of my three state trip. And you know, on the first video, you know, I tried to encourage, you know, younger guys, you know, like myself that's single, uh, you know, might have a girlfriend, might not, but to get out and do something like this. But here, I wanna encourage those guys a little bit older, or maybe those guys my age that might have a kid or married or something, you know, it really depends on your wife now. Now, I, I have to grant it that. Uh, but really, if you want to do something like this, you know, this is this is no doubt, this is my passion. I love doing this. I'm gonna do it as long as I can, as long as I'm able to, um, but to go and kill as many bucks as many states as I can. But for those guys that are sitting there, you know, you got kids, you got a wife, you can do this. Now, you know, you might not get to do it every year, but let's just, let's, I'm gonna give you a challenge. Say you're sitting there wanting to do something like this, okay? Say right now, whatever time of year this is, you know, November, uh, set you a goal for next year, okay? I'm gonna put so much back, just a little bit here, a little bit there, and next year, I'm gonna go somewhere within that budget that I've set aside. Now, it may be as much as you want it to be. If you wanna set, say, $100 back a month or whatever, you know, by, by next year, you know, say if you've done $100, that'd be $1,200. You might not be able to go, you know, 10, 12 hours from home, but you might be able to go three or four next state over with that money. So, you know, budget yourself. And I guarantee you, this is the challenge I'm getting getting at here. I guarantee you, if I can get y'all to do that one time, you'll try to do it again, and you'll figure out how to do it again. So, it's, it's just something, you know, if you want, it's not sitting there saying, oh, I want to do that. Maybe I'll get to do that one day. 
No, you can do it. You just have to plan ahead, and you have to, you kind of have to discipline yourself in a, you know, in a, in a certain way that you say, okay, uh, you know, maybe I don't need that right now, but, you know, something you want to buy or whatever you might, well, maybe I don't need that right now. Maybe I need to wait. Maybe I need to put this little bit of money back to go on a trip sometime and I'm telling you you will you will it, it, it makes so much difference the memories the enjoyment the fun you have on trips like this killing deer or just having fun in general not just the killing of the animal that's just a bonus but the fun you have the, the knowledge you learn is priceless literally uh, and I'm telling you 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 will you will try to make time and plan every year if i can get you guys out there that's sitting there wanting to do this if i can get y'all out there one time i will guarantee you y'all will try to do it again but i'm i'm just really really thankful and blessed for this deer this is an absolute stud and hey look this is public land you can hunt this you sitting there watching this y'all could hunt this same deer granted i'm not going to tell you where this deer's at or was i'm not going to tell you where it was but look, you get on maps, you find public, you go there, you start, you learn, you just it, trial and error, trial and error over and over again. And you will have success. Just the opportunities you'll have, I'm telling you, it is something else. But like I say, any one of y'all watching this would have had that same opportunity at this deer. You know, say if y'all were to plan maybe last year you know planning to go somewhere hey y'all might have possibly been able to come here and kill this deer that's why i'm trying to get y'all out into the outdoors we have got to keep this sport going because there's no doubt it's definitely fading away quick and you know it's people my age and maybe a little older right now that's really needs to really step up and try to keep that going otherwise you know it could be a it could be a lost thing here in the near future but I really enjoyed this. I appreciate y'all watching. Um, I'm fixing to start working on him, getting him cut up. I don't have far to go to the boat. It's literally right here, 30 yards. But uh, I'm going to get this get this guy all, uh, cut up, taken care of in the boat, heading out, going to the next state. And uh, I appreciate y'all watching. Be sure to like, subscribe if you are not a subscriber, and also comment on the video. It really helps the channel out helps those algorithms kick in uh, it gets our it gets our videos out in front of a lot of other people that way also share it share it to your Facebook page uh, share it if you got Instagram share it to your, to your Instagram that helps us get out in front of more people because we really really want to build the do-it-yourself hunter brand for everyone not just not just me and Jeremy we want it for every one of you watching so you know I, I, I sure appreciate y'all following along but what an absolute stud of a Kansas deer, y'all. Awesome.